Change, no matter how small, leaves an impression. It has an impact on us. It may cause from hard to notice inconvenience to active resistance, sabotage even of our change initiatives. It could also bring more energy, ideas, results and a much needed long lost spark. But there is one little thing we often completely sometimes meticulously disregard in our efforts in change. And by disregarding it, avoiding it, thinking it's somebody else's job to deal with it, we increase the risk of failure exponentially. Any ideas what this might be? Stay tuned. How we deal with change is a very personal affair. It depends on the nature of our current role. Are we leading, following or simply observing the change? How about our previous experiences of change initiatives? Were they successful, long-lasting, painless or exactly the opposite? What are the benefits and pitfalls from this change for us and our teams? Our stance towards change has also to do with who we truly are, outside work that is. Even our upbringing plays a role, if not the most pivotal one. And also, what's going on in our personal lives as a parallel process in the background. Although dealing with change is personal, there is something almost universal in the vast majority of organizations. There is one word, apparently forbidden, deemed as unnecessary, needless, as non-existent in our efforts in change. It's the E word, and most of us do our best to avoid it. But I'm afraid to say it is quite unavoidable, the E word. E for emotion. Perhaps the powerhouse behind the steely facade right in the heart of every modern organization. What we fail to recognize, even though we should do so unapologetically, is that every workplace, even yours, is packed with emotion. We may have the tendency to refer, assume and think about the negative ones each and every time we hear the E word, such as frustration, anger, resentment, jealousy, fear and so on, but there's plenty of positive ones too. Passion, excitement, joy. Emotions have been demonized as a sign of weakness, only relevant to specific industries. How many times you've heard something along these lines? We are a technology company here, not the opera. That's a real quote, by the way. Imagine for a moment an organization without emotions. An empty, flat, dry, demotivating, dead environment without a spark, without life. Now imagine an organization full of emotion. It becomes alive, full of buzz, color, meaningful interactions. Great conversations, brainstorming ideas, solutions, a workplace full of happiness. Remember once again, emotions can be positive too. They can be absolutely powerful drivers, creativity, innovation, commitment, dedication, personal sacrifice are all supported, fed, fueled with our emotions. Even the drier side of business, the bottom line, the reports with OKRs and KPIs, the processes, policies, requirements and their invest criteria, they all rely on our interest, satisfaction, excitement, on how dedicated, committed, passionate, engaged people are. 
And these characteristics are undeniably supported by people's emotions. Without a doubt, there's been a legitimate attempt to shift the focus away from people and towards the system, the processes, the methods, the tools and their boundaries, the organizational charts, ecosystem maps and so on. And despite the fact that there's merit to do so, focusing on the mechanistic, procedural side of change, predominantly due to the blame culture, myopic management and theory X, this approach towards transformations has a tendency to de-people organizations and treat them as numbers, resources, human capital, cogs in the machine, even costs on two legs. We are people. People with emotions by design. As the most integral part of every organization, us, people, we bring our heart and soul and our emotions to work every single day. So why dispute the indisputable? But rather denying reality, let us all accept that emotions at work exist. We are not as nearly as rational, logical, predictable and manageable as we would like to think. So why is this important? Recognizing and understanding emotions, yours and those of others, gives you more choices about how to respond when duty calls as a change leader. Whether your transformation is top-down, bottom-up, holocratic, systemic, sociocratic or anything else, once change starts gaining traction, it is nearly always accompanied by strong emotions, perhaps not by everybody, but definitely by some. Where somebody gains something in change, I'm sure there's another person that loses something else. Understanding your own emotional response to the emotional response of others towards change gives you more choice. A choice to be more grounded. A choice to be more empathetic. A choice to be there to provide support in various situations. Ignoring emotions may derail all your change efforts, sabotage your transformation, increase the risk at greater levels with people setting roadblocks every step of the way. Working with emotions can be an unsettling thought. This thought may cause doubts or put us in a position to question our own abilities even. However, we don't necessarily need to be a fully trained psychologist to be human. Simply allowing ourselves to connect with others, empathize and support however we can, by lending a friendly ear, by creating the time and space for others to connect with their emotions too. So next time emotions unfold in front of you, take a deep breath, stay grounded, and be in the moment, as a good friend would. In future videos, we'll discuss practical, powerful, yet humane ways that will help you support yourself and others. Techniques that will bring a more meaningful touch in times of change at work. Ideas to help others move on from the past, focus on the positive side of change, and avoid the lowest points, the value of death, that any transformation is likely to suffer from. So, what are your thoughts about the E-word at work? Is the culture of your organization open or hostile towards emotions? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget, if you liked this video, hit the like button below and subscribe for more. That'd be lovely. Thanks for watching. Till the next one, I'm Lazarus Wolf. Take care.